What's going on, everyone? Philly Insider. I got Hunter here. I got Drew. And we're going to be talking about some news today. Uh, had some news drop yesterday. Not as big as today, I would say. We had Kirk Ring. He's, they, they announced he's going to start the year on the IL. And then we also have Taiwan Walker. There's going to be an MRI today. So we'll get some news about that today, too, which will be interesting. But today we get more news. Matt Strom has been extended. Obviously, we knew he was coming up on the final year of his two-year contract. I think you and me have both talked about this during the offseason, Drew. We were hoping something was going to get done with him. I didn't know if it was going to get done before the season, but I was just hoping if he performed well this year, they would get something done. But yeah. he is going to be here another year. And then Jake Cave has also been traded, which for me, that's a, a burden lifted off of my back. I know it's a huge shy relief for a lot of Phillies fans, and I'm very glad that. No offense to him, just it was it was time. And it had been time, honestly. And I think Pache earned at least – the right to start the regular season here um, and to see what he can do. So how are we doing, Drew? Thoughts on everything that went down today? How's it going, everybody? You know, I wasn't on the other day, mainly because I was sick and, you know, I'm still sick, but uh, I'm feeling good about everything that happened today, pretty much. I mean, I think Jake Cave being gone, it was kind of like a formality. Like, I think they were just kind of looking for an excuse to do it. And Pache kind of gave him that, honestly, because he's played – very well this spring for the most part. I mean, he's not going to hit like a regular major leaguer well most of the time. But I mean, if he can give you anything close to that, it's kind of like Rojas, like the defense makes up for anything he lacks offensively. But like, they just can't be zeros in the lineup. And neither of them look like they're going to be that. I mean, Rojas has struggled pretty badly at points this preseason. But I think, uh, I think both of them being on the opening day roster is the uh, the correct move. I think everybody is in agreement with that. Yeah. Yeah, and we got my boy Phil Gallon in here. Um, got the news right from us. So, yeah, we are we are the breaking news guys, you know. We're always before uh, Passan and Nightingale and all them. But, no, on a serious note, um, glad that we could inform you on that. But, yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen any compensation either on Jake Cave. I think um, me and Drew haven't both haven't seen anything yet. So we will got, we will update you guys if anything happens during this stream, if we hear anything. Um, but yeah, as Ethan says, no more Jake Cave. And um, yeah, I want to dive into this, the Strom extension a little bit. So um, again, I, I think this made all the sense in the world. This was a guy who you and me both wanted to stick around here, Drew. Yeah. He's, he's had a lot of success in just the one year he's been here. And I think I always say it, but I think his fastball gets on hitters quicker than it looks like it's 94, 95, you know, it, it gets up there for sure. Sometimes 93, but I, I really think that it, it's deceptive out of his hand. Like, I don't think he yeah. shows it very well. And I think his other pitches, I believe he throws a cutter as well. Um, they play off of it. Well, so Strom is just someone, he has a really good pitch mix for a reliever and he does have that long inning versatility or long man versatility. That being said, I think he is so good in one inning at this point where that by the time we get to the end of the season, you'll see his innings start to get managed more. Um, the versatility is more of a early season thing, in my opinion. But then when you get to the back end of the season and then he's only pitching one inning, man, he is such a weapon in the playoffs in that role. And he's just been, I mean, he's just been so much more than I think any of us expected him to be. And the Phillies, a lot of people thought they overpaid when they gave him that contract. I believe it was, was it 15 over two years? I think that's what it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe 16, but I mean, it was it was definitely more than I think people were expecting him to get in the baseball world. But I loved how it turned out. I honestly liked it when we signed him to it because I saw some potential there. I certainly didn't expect him to perform as well as he has with the Phillies so far, though. And I'm really glad that he is going to be sticking around in Philadelphia for a couple extra years. And do you have the ter exact terms of the extension? I think I have it up here. There's 2025 through 2025. And then there's a club slash vesting option for 2026. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably going to be something where like, if he pitches so many innings, he's it's going to vest no matter what, whether the team wants it to or not. So I think, uh, I think that's a good thing for him. Kind of motivates him a little bit. I think those are, those are always Definitely. good deals for uh, relievers because if they don't stay healthy, then you have an out basically. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think you're kind of you kind of hit the nail on the head as far as Strom's like fastball goes. It's kind of like not that they're the same caliber of pitcher, but Josh Hader, like they kind of like contort their bodies like whenever they are yes. in the middle of their delivery. Similar and it, mechanics. It's like, very, very similar mechanics, actually. But uh, I think Hader has a couple more ticks on his fastball. But I mean, it doesn't it, it's very deceptive. That's that's what makes Josh Hader really good. And 
I think Strom is right there with him, honestly. I mean, last year he was absolutely phenomenal when he started pitching only one inning. And I think they already confirmed that he's going to be like a one inning guy this year. Good. So I think we have something to look forward to in that because he could be he could be better than a lot of other guys in the bullpen, honestly. I think mm-hmm. he could end up being like an eighth or ninth inning guy if things go his way. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I think you saw it in the playoffs last year, you know. Obviously, game one of the NLDS, Ozzie Alves did hit that ball hard, but he gets out of that inning thanks to a strong play by Trey Turner. And I think there was some concern there after that with with Strom coming into situations like that. And obviously, he did have his ups and downs in the regular season too. But then I think you see him go out there in the the closing game, in game four, and he goes out in the ninth, comes in with two runners on base, first and third, no outs. And he gets out of that inning. And honestly, he kind of dominated that inning too. And I believe he, he faced... He faced some of the bigger names in that Braves lineup in that inning, too. Like, it was not easy. Uh, So, for him to do that in that situation, to come through in that spot, that shows you what Matt Strom can do. And he doesn't fear anyone. I mean, that's a guy who goes out there and he has that passion on the mound you want. Like, he, he, to me, in that sense of the mentality and the fire he brings is somewhat similar to Hoffman. I think Hoffman's got a little extra juice in that category. Um, It's hard to measure, like, quantify that or measure it, but... I think they're both very similar in that they're not going to fear anyone and they want a certain part of the order up. Like they want to face the best of the best and go out there and get those guys out. So that's what I love about Strom. And to answer Ethan's question, again, I think we we talked about this a lot on the pod. They are not going to have a primary closer. Will Matt Strom close at points? For sure. But the extension is not necessarily indicating anything about his role. And it's not necessarily meaning that his role is going to change. It's just he's a really valuable part of this bullpen. He can get lefties and righties. And I think especially lefties, you're going to see him in some of those spots. But, you know, if there's a part of the order where it goes lefty, righty, righty, like he can get both the righties too. That's not a problem for him. So that's the other thing we've talked about before, Drew, is he doesn't have left, like he doesn't have problems lefty, righty. He can get both of them. So um, I think on that, like he's going to have some high leverage spots, I'm sure. Like you said, Drew, I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if he got more of those high leverage spots. But it's also going to be a matchup based. And that's the nice thing about this bullpen is, you have so many of these guys who can get these big outs and big spots. And speaking of Hoffman, I think that's the only other guy you want locked up beyond this year. Um, Because you have Sir Anthony, I think is still here beyond this year. Uh, Alvarado, we obviously have him on the arbitration extension, if I'm not mistaken, which is a really good deal. Um, And am I forgetting anyone? I know Soto is under team control for a couple more more years, but I think that's mostly everyone. Kirk Ring, obviously he's, just yeah. he's still a rookie technically so Goes he'll be under saying. team control for until like 2030 or something like that so mm-hmm. right and uh yeah. i think that's a good thing i mean it's great to have all these high leverage relievers that you can lean on and they're all secured for years to come i mean it gives them like a sense of security i think within the organization because you can focus on developing the minor leaguers you don't have to rush them whenever they need to be or whenever like somebody gets hurt you know we have the upper level depth of relievers and starters now, which is something that not a lot of organizations have because I mean, like Taiwan just went down. I mean, not went down, but he's injured and you have somebody to step in immediately in Turnbull. And then there's even guys behind him, like Abel seems like he's probably the next guy in honestly, but you have uh, Nick Nelson. I think he's still down there. I mean, it's, it's not great depth, but I mean, depth is depth as far as right. starting pitching goes. So, yeah. And if you're getting, if you're getting down to Nick Nelson at that point, you know, two or three guys have gone down and there are only so many injuries you can prepare for. And at that point, you're probably going to have Nick Nelson pitch a month or two before making a move for a, a much better improvement, right? Like he's not going to pitch the majority of those, um, those couple months I was, or the, the majority of the, that spot the rest of the season. So, um, like you said, Drew, he's deaf. And at that point, you're just hoping he's going to eat innings for you. I mean, that is ideally what his role would be if he were to come up. But um, you have guys like that. Uh, and I think just we can kind of focus our attention to now what these spots look like, too, since we didn't have you on the other day. Um, speaking of the, the Strom extension, too, you know, obviously he's going to be locked up here. We have all the a couple guys locked up as well. Uh, but the team is starting to take shape along with the Jim yeah. Cave roster move as well. We'll get to that in a second, but I do want to talk about the bullpen, like I said, since we didn't have you on yesterday. So you have your your tops. Well, obviously, I guess you don't have your top six necessarily since Kirkering is not going to be on there. Um, 
he will start the year on IL. And again, it's nice that it's not an elbow or arm thing. Like it right. is just illness. And that is something he, you would guess he would hopefully fully recover from um, in due yeah. time. So it's good. He just kind of needs to ramp up. Um, you now have a lot of the bullpen set with Jose Ruiz and Andrew Bellotta getting reassigned. Neither were on the 40 man roster. Uh, and we knew that going into camp one, you know, especially Ruiz or especially Bellotti, he was going to have to blow them out of the water since he got moved off of the 40 man. So now you have the bullpen is Alvarado, Sir Anthony, Hoffman, Soto, Strom. And I believe there are, are – did I get everyone? There's two spots up for yeah. grabs right now? Three spots. I think three, I spots. three spots up for grabs. Yeah. Okay. It'll be those um, guys, and then it'll be Marte, Brogdon, and Ortiz because okay. Turnbull, so, Turnbull's not in the bullpen. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. Now that if, if Taiwan Walker does end up going on the IL, which – I would guess even if it's not anything major and they avoid a major injury, my guess would be that Tywin Walker is not going to be on the opening day roster as of right now. I mean, that's the way it's been trending. Even when he's pitched, that's the way it's been trending. So I would guess, yeah. So I guess those three guys who are all competing for spots have now gotten spots. Um, And I'm okay with that too. Like, you know, if you find a trade for a guy like Brogdon, that's maybe something that happens. And, you know, we'll see. Rucker Rucker is someone who I like, but obviously he's going to start the year on the IL too. But we'll see when he comes back if he maybe goes down. He has an option too, so maybe he goes down to the minors depending um, if all these guys are pitching well. If he, you know, if no one else is pitching well or one of these guys isn't pitching too good, then maybe we do have one of those guys come up. So, or we have Rucker come off the IL and get a spot. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, thoughts on those three guys filling those bullpen spots? Yeah, I think uh, Marte. I feel like he kind of earned his spot anyway. I think he was going to end up opening on the roster as it was, but. Uh... Ortiz and Brogdon, I mean, I think it's going to be good for them to kind of get a chance because Brogdon, it, he was not going to make the opening day roster, if we're being honest, because no. he has mightily struggled this spring from what I've seen. I mean, he's done a couple good things here and there, but he's mostly been what he's been for the last year, and it's been inconsistent, giving up lots of runs. And it seems like, I don't know, we had that like month, it was like a madness run from him where he was throwing like 97 98 and it was dominant stuff and since then he hasn't he hasn't shown us really anything promising and that was almost two years ago now it feels like and ortiz he's he's really showed out this spring honestly and i think it's going to be a good thing for him to get some experience in the major leagues even if they have to end up sending him back down then because that's valuable depth then you have guys that are major league experience major league ready and Brogdon is out of options, so whenever Kirk Ring comes back, you might see him get sent out. And he's probably not yeah. going to clear waivers because he has had major league success before. And I think uh, other teams are going to be looking for guys like that here in the beginning of the season. Yeah, I, I think as far as Brogdon goes, I actually thought he was having a pretty solid spring up until yesterday when it was like, oh, well, that's the Brogdon we thought we were going to see when he gives up a home run and walks a guy and – and gave up two runs and on three hits as well. It was just more of the same. Um, so a lot of what he had done, some of what he had done well in spring, in again, limited time for these guys. You know, we only see them for so many innings. So even if he was doing well, it's a small sample size. It kind of wiped that away. Now, like I said, I think there were some good signs. I think that Brogdon can eat an inning for you if you need him to. But ideally, I don't think he's on this roster the whole year. And I think he's just kind of deaf for you at this point. I think his changeup is really, really good when it's on. Like that is far and away yeah. one of the better pitches on the team, honestly, in the bullpen when it's on. But he, he just hasn't had it. He hasn't had anything the past year, unfortunately. And, I, and at this point, it might be a confidence thing with him. Like that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. I don't know if he's ever going to get that back. Um, and I know he wasn't anything crazy before that, but you at least know you at least know that he before that when he was pitching in the 2022 playoffs, you knew he could pitch in a low leverage spot if you needed him to, at the very least. Um, now he's not really even doing that. So I think as far as the other two guys go, I like Ortiz a lot. He's a guy who they are stretching out. He can eat innings if you need him to. He's going to fill that long man role. If Turnbull is in fact in the rotation to start the year and Taiwan is not, I think Ortiz is going to be fine. I think he's pitched well the past two springs. I think he's shown a lot of upside uh, in those two springs. I don't think he's a high leverage guy at any point, but I certainly could see him fulfilling that mop up role, at least until Kobe is back or if, Kobe's not really 100% at any point where they don't feel like he's going to be as good as Ortiz. I'm fine with Ortiz filling that role the majority of that year. Um, and then as far as uh, Marte goes, 
The only reason I didn't have Marte on my opening day roster was because I, he had a minor league option, and I just thought they would want the depth and they'd want to use that. So I'm actually really glad he is going to be on it because I think he's showed signs of improvement. I think he's pitched really well at certain points this spring. Um, I haven't watched him super, super closely, but from what I've seen, I think he's been good. And I think Marte, he showed a lot of a lot of flashes last year. I think his sinker is a very good pitch. The slider, I think he just needs to work on on honing that a little bit more and getting it where it needs to go. But I like Marte a lot. I think there's upside there, and I think that's someone they could groom into a really good reliever for them down the road. So, um, you know, I'm fine with all three of these guys getting spots. Yeah, I'm pretty much in the same place you are as far as that goes. Like Marte, he definitely has the potential to be like near the back end of the bullpen at some point if he can just hone hone in his uh, control a little bit. So that, that'll definitely be uh, interesting to watch in the opening weeks of the season because, yeah. I mean, I Brogdon's obviously the first guy out whenever something does happen. But, definitely. I mean, unless he would were to pitch very, very well here in the first couple weeks, which I don't really perceive happening. But um, back backtracking a little bit here, uh, Jake Cave was traded for cash considerations. That, that just mm -hmm. came out here about five minutes ago. Yeah. Any, any thoughts on cash considerations? I haven't seen him play too, too much, but um, I would guess he's probably going to be more valuable to the organization than Jay Cave. Yeah, yeah, I think he might be. I, I heard that guy's a dog. <laughs> well, that's what um, I'm hoping for. <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't ever going to get a very good player for Jay Cave, even if no. you did get one. It would have been like a very, very, very early on guy, maybe in the minors or something, or a guy that has had injury issues or something like that. Yeah, the, the biggest thing was just opening up a roster spot and getting something in return. That was really right. what I was concerned with, with Jake Cave. So yep. not really much to evaluate there. I mean, that is what it is. That saga's over. You would ideally, at some point this year, like to have a left-handed bench bat not named Garrett Stubbs. That would be helpful. Um, doesn't have to be anything major, but it would help to have someone. Did David Dahl get moved out of camp yet? I, I'm unaware if that happened quite yet. I don't think he did. I think he's okay. still around. I mean, he's okay. gone, he's been good. He's been good this yeah. spring. So it'll be kind of like a curious case whether they keep yeah. him or not. Because he could also, if he doesn't make the club, could he opt out and then go to another team as well as that? With the minor league deals, I know that happens um, a lot. Yeah, I don't know exactly how it works, honestly, with that. Okay. Being yeah, a better guess... guy, I would assume he can. Right. Yeah. That would be my guess. Cause that you're seeing a lot of these names pop up now, like Carl Edwards Jr. Someone who's come up linked to the Phillies as potential yeah. relief death. I, I would love that. Honestly, I think that would be really solid for us. Um, that's another topic, but yeah, I mean, if you want a left-handed bench bat and he ends up sticking in Lehigh Valley, I mean, that would be a great guy to call up at some point this year and see if he can do something too. If you end up, you know, moving Pache or moving someone else at some point this year um, or, you know, God forbid Rojas doesn't perform well enough and he ends up going back down. Like, you know, these are things to consider. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would not be opposed to them adding a left-handed bench bat before the deadline at some point. Um, and, yeah, let's get to a few of these comments too because I think there's some some interesting topics on the 40-man or the 26-man as well that we can talk about. Uh, a lot of Jordan Montgomery talk going around right now, Drew. And uh, I, I have my opinion. You know my opinion. But I want to give you the floor to, to share your thoughts on this. I talked about it yesterday in the video as well. Um, and you kind of hinted at it too earlier, but Tywin Walker, obviously, like we talked about, he's getting an MRI today. I would be surprised if he started the year on opening day rush. That's not us reporting anything, it, purely opinions on this podcast, but that's just the way it seems like it's trending right now. Um, so what are your thoughts on potentially going out and pursuing a Jordan Montgomery uh, versus what we have in the building right now? Yeah, um, I just, I think they're kind of like in the same boat. I believe he has a uh, qualifying offer to add to him, right? No, he does not. I know Blake oh, okay. Snell did, but that does change some things for Jordan Montgomery. Right. I saw I saw one of the major reporters like put in an article that uh, they would look to be going under the third tax threshold if they did sign him. So they'd have to be yes. moving some guys around off the forty man or whatever, or the off the twenty six man, whatever it may be, trading away a contract, maybe tying a prospect to it and getting rid of it, whether that be like Taiwan or whatever it may be. I just, I mean, everybody saw what Jordan Montgomery did in the playoffs last year. I mean, he was absolutely phenomenal for the Rangers. And I think a lot of teams want that guy. But I think Scott Boris has kind of overplayed his hand a little bit with these last couple free agents that he had and yeah. ultimately screwed them out of a lot of money. But 
I think uh, the Phillies are kind of just going to avoid it because of the third tax threshold and having to deal with all that stuff whenever, like, if they would sign him. I mean, right. they obviously like him and want him, but it's just not really realistic for them this year, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. I I just don't think it makes a whole lot of sense that they're trying to stay under the third threshold, which is why I've just never really been interested in talking about it too much. Um, we, we have talked about it a lot on the podcast just because it's come up a lot and it's been a very interesting topic around baseball because I mean, it's now the week of opening day and he has not been signed. Uh, that's surprising. Blake, even Blake Snell, he got signed last week. That was late, but he's signed now. Like that's over with, uh, he's going to pitch for the giants this year. Um, it, it feel, it, also on that, I just wanted to note too. I think it's really funny that he ended up with the giants, a team that has, notably like lost out on many notable free agents over the past few years. And then it kind of just felt like, all right, I guess I'll go to the giants on this deal. Like it is what it is. You know, it didn't really, I don't know for me, it just, it felt like one of those things where he probably didn't want to be there necessarily, but that's just how it ended up. Um, so I thought that was funny, but they gave him high AV over two years. I would say it's just, it's a two year deal. So yeah. With an opt out. Um, with an opt out. Yeah. So Something like that from Montgomery, I could see. Again, we've talked about this before, Drew. They're going to blow through the luxury tax next year. But this year, it would benefit them to just stay under it one more year before they do blow through it because you don't want to have to deal with those penalties multiple years in a row, start piling up, um, starts affecting the organization. So I am cool with not going over it. Again, Jordan Montgomery on the right deal for the right price. I'm all for it. Like If they want to do that, that's a guy who's pitched in the postseason. He's pitched well in the postseason. And you know what you can get out of him in a regular season. Like it's going to be pretty consistent throughout the year. I think he's pretty similar to what you're getting out of Ranger Suarez and Ranger Suarez is a lot cheaper and he's a really good pitcher. You might get a little more out of Jordan Montgomery, but I just don't, I don't see like the urgency from the fan base that, and a lot of them say like the counterpoint is, well, why wouldn't you want all these good players to fill these good positions? And again, like the luxury tax does matter. And even outside of that, it's like, okay, if they're not going to go over the luxury tax, what is the the third luxury tax? What is the point of having this conversation? That's kind of where I've always stood. Like we're operating, operating under the assumption that they're not going to do that. So with that in mind, they literally signed Spencer Turnbull in case Tywin Walker or someone else got hurt. And we are now in that exact scenario. And now people don't want him to start even after he's pitched well in spring. And I get it spring training, but he's, it's not just that he has good numbers. Like he has looked good in spring. I think his velocity needs to uptick a little bit for sure. But I also think he was really good before Tommy John. Like I, I thought he was really a, a very much like a league average pitcher. And okay. if you're going to get a league average performance out of a guy like that, who you signed for what four million total, if the incentives yeah. all kick in, who cares, man? Like that's nothing. That you're really Absolutely. not, you're not losing anything there. So I, yeah. and I think his curveball and slider have looked good in spring. His changeup is one of his better pitches. Like he's got a good pitch mix. All his stuff has been moving pretty well, in my opinion. And the control is starting to come back too. Like. He wouldn't be. I think we might have lost Hunter. I think he might be gone. Having the success, he's. I think you guys lost me for a second there, but I think I'm back we did. now. Yeah, I I get the up like I I I understand the uproar, and I understand people want good players. It's not that we don't want a good player when we say we're not really in on Jordan Montgomery. It's more so the situation that we're in right now. So that's just kind of where I stand on it. Sorry, I was uh, almost dying over here. Um, yeah, I, I just I think we all we're all in on Jordan Montgomery. Like if they sign him, like everybody would be happy with the signing. But it just it's not really realistic at this point because if they're gonna go out when when they go out next year and sign all these big free agents, if they do, they're not gonna be getting starting pitching. That's just the reality of it because they're gonna need lineup help at some point here in the next couple of years because Schwarber's leaving. Castellanos will be leaving, and maybe they can move the Castellanos contract if they get a guy that they like a lot more than him. I mean, that's not unrealistic, but crazier things have happened. And, uh, yeah, I just – they're starting pitching so strong here for the next four years or three years. It's just – there's really no reason for them to go and spend hundreds of million dollars on starting pitching anymore because yeah. – even when they do lose their free agents, like Taiwan will be gone in a couple of years. Ranger, I'm assuming they're going to try to extend, but you never know for sure. And Chris Sanchez, he's under team control for a few more years yet. And like they still have Painter and Abel waiting in the wings. I mean, there's depth coming 
and they're not going to want to be holding those guys back from the major leagues when they're ready because they signed, you know, Blake Snell or somebody like that. You know, it's just, I just don't see it happening. Yeah, it's another great point. Like, again, Jordan Montgomery on a short-term deal was an opt-out, sure. Like, that makes sense. But yeah, uh, he, he, he has not budged on his stance of wanting a long, longer-term deal. And it just wouldn't make sense to me to, to block those guys off for a guy, in my opinion, who is a very, very solid pitcher, but not worth going over the tax for. Like, there are guys that are worth it for. Obviously, Yamamoto did not pitch well in his debut. Um, that's very well documented at this point. His last – his Spring training start and then his first regular season start were not good. But putting that aside for a second, like in during the offseason when we looked at him, that was a guy who I think we all agreed, along with the Phillies agreeing with us, that he was worth going over for based off of the potential there. And, you know, it's still a long season. We're going to see what happens with him. But another guy like Sasaki, you know, obviously next year there's stuff with him in the international signing period and all that stuff that there's it's a little bit different next year. But let's say at some point he were to become available. Um, in a couple off seasons, like, yeah, in a couple off seasons, that would make a lot of sense to do something like that and to dish out the money if you really wanted to. Um, but with where they're at right now in the state of the rotation, we're set up for some time. And I, I feel pretty good about the rotation right now as it is too. I think pe people like opposing fan bases, but also our own look at our rotation and bullpen. And just, I don't know why people don't like our rotation and bullpen very much. I think there's a lot of trauma there sp specifically with the bullpen too. Um, that just doesn't, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me why people aren't super high on these guys. Um, and I'm not saying you got to be like through the roof, like thinking these guys are the, the best rotation or bullpen in the league. There's debates to be had there, but I certainly think they're, I don't like, there are people who think that we don't have a top third rotation and bullpen. This, this yeah. is absolutely, these are, this is absolutely a top 10 pitching staff overall in the league. And I would go as far to say a top five, um, just because they don't have the flashy names that other ones do, they still have such well-rounded depth in both departments. And you have to remember, pitching isn't going to be perfect either. So um, even without Jordan Montgomery, I feel very good about this rotation right now as it is. So I, I again, I'm not opposed to signing him. It's just I don't see, I don't see it as urgent as other people see it as. So right, I think uh, I think our starting pitching is ranked second in the MLB as far as Fangraphs project projections go because i think the dodgers kind of passed us whenever they signed uh or got glass now and yamamoto yeah. but i uh i mean there's not many teams that have chris sanchez pitching as their number five that's just the way it is unfortunately for a lot of teams because i mean think about a couple of years ago for us you know we were we had nola and we had who we had ranger <laughs> I mean, Vince, Ranger wasn't even Ranger. in the major leagues starting pitching yet. No, it was Vince Velasquez and Nick Pavetta starting games and Chase yeah. Anderson and Matt Moore at certain points, too. Right. Disgrace. Now, just imagine that. Like, I mean, Chris Sanchez would never have been the number five on those teams. I mean, he would be like a two or a three. <laughs> and yeah. that's just – that's not what he is. I'm, I mean, that's just being real. I mean, he has the potential to be like a number four, maybe a low-end number three. But, I mean, him being your number five, it really says a lot about – your organization because mm -hmm. i mean we're so deep at starting pitching compared to a lot of teams it's it's kind of crazy i mean the braves had um bryce outer starting playoff games last year and they're a consensus top team in the league i mean and our bullpen i mean it, it'll go up against any team i mean that's just the reality of it yeah i'm with you drew i'm with you let's get a few of these comments here too as we um, continue to talk about the bullpen and the rotation. Um, Nereo, all the way from Italy, always appreciate you tuning in, buddy. Uh, says, Hey guys, it seems like the church of G Soto believers and G Soto himself really needs to step up. How about make some t shirts to motivate our bullpen hero? I mean, hey, uh, anything to motivate Gregory Soto right now? I think he's been quite up and down this spring. I don't know what we're going to get from him in the regular season. I would guess probably more of that, like some good outings here and there, some rough outings here and there. That's I'm, I'm kind of at that point with Gregory Soto. Like, I'm not completely out on him. I'm not completely in on him. I'm just kind of accepting there's going to be good and bad this upcoming season. Um, yeah. And that's the case with any reliever, but I think more so with him, it's just probably going to be some inconsistency there, unfortunately. But, yeah, I mean, if, if we get some T-shirts out for him and that helps him get better, I mean, hey, I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah, let's give him a standing ovation. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dude. if he – if he could limit his blow up outings to like one or two runs, it would be totally fine because he is so dominant whenever he doesn't allow any runs. Like, I mean, last year, it seemed like at times he was like 
prime Randy Johnson. Like he was just blowing guys away. Like it was, it was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I, it really is night and day with him. I don't know how else to say it, but yeah, it is. Um, also, uh, screw all the Eagles Twitter people who were saying to give the team a standing ovation when they were in that losing streak. Like, no, the Phillies, like, that's, uh, it really aggravates me. I I also do hate the Eagles' chance at the Phillies games, man. Like, this is, like, a different team. And the Phillies did it first. Like, you're not going to, even the, for the Phillies alone, like, no other player, like, you're not going to be able to replicate what happened with the Trey Turner standing ovation. Like, that's not becoming a regular thing. That's, like, a once, not once in a lifetime, but, like, it's one of those things like you're not going to see it happen in a long time and see it work like that in a long time. Like that was a special situation and I'm very glad that it was saved for that, but you know, it's not going to be like that's, that can't just be like a regular occurrence. Um, I know that's not your, what you were hinting at. You were joking, right. but there are people out there who still there. Every time something happens now, it's like, Oh, should we do a standing? Oh, no, <laughs> um, no one else here has a 13 year contract like Trey Turner. So yeah, um, definitely. Dave is gone. <laughs> Great breakfast news. Eva Pache. Yeah. I'm mean, Sean. Uh, we're, we are jumping, uh, jumping out of our socks right now, getting excited about the JK news. So very excited about that. And yeah, cash considerations. You love to see it. Hopefully he's going to be a good player for us uh, moving forward. And yeah, good question here. Can Turnbull fill the Kobe role? If when Walker returns, I think he'll more than fill the Kobe role. If that's yeah. the case. Um, and honestly, look, if he pitches well, like, I wouldn't be opposed to him being the rotation for some time too. We'll see how yeah. a full season would go. You might still need, if Walker is out long-term, you might still need to look at getting a Michael Lorenzen type to just get some insurance for yourself uh, to get you through the rest of that season. But the chances are that you're not going to be pitching Turnbull in the playoff rotation. I mean, I, I would hope not. Um, if he pitches into that role, great. I mean, that's a good problem to have, but you just kind of need someone to get you through the rest of the season. Um, yeah. If Taiwan's out for a longer period of time. Yeah. I think, uh, actually, I'll kind of not disagree, but like kind of give my opinion on that. Go but, for uh, it. Disagree, think, Drew. Uh, disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll disagree. How about that? I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't think they're going to be going out and getting another starting pitcher really at any point this year because the Abel's in the wings. I mean, he's right there. Yeah. And I mean, he's, showing them this spring that he's ready. I mean, the other day he struck out Bryce Harper in that simulated game. I, I don't know if you saw yeah. that or not, but I did see that. Yeah. He's this spring, his control, his command has been pretty much a plus. I mean, he's been, he's been very, very good. And he's kind of just given them like a heads up, like, Hey guys, you know, I'm, I'm ready. Come get me. And I, I believe he's starting the year at triple a, as far as I saw. I, I would guess, be. I would guess that would, that would be the case. Yeah. And I think uh, another guy that could fill like the Kobe role or whatever it may be, if Turnbull ends up staying in the rotation would be McGarry, because if he could hone in his control a little bit and get stretched out to two or three innings, not, not being a starting pitcher still, but still being a bullpen guy, I think uh, that could be a guy they lean on in that role at some point this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, if, Abel ends up filling that role too at some point, or he gets called up. That is, I'm totally fine with that too. <laughs> like I would be very glad with that. Um, and I certainly think that's a possibility too. So I don't, I don't even disagree with you there. Um, I just think in the event that they want to give Abel more time and that Turnbull is oh, yeah. okay, but not well enough, you might see them go out and get like a, a versatile, like six man type of guy. Um, and even, you know, maybe Abel is ready and they just get like a, a guy who can go a couple innings in the pen. I don't know, but um, you know, there's not always those guys available either. Like, right. you, obviously, we saw with Lorenzen, you have to pay a pretty penny for even rotation death at the deadline. So, yeah. I'm okay with if they want to keep Abel and just go forward with that plan. Like, I'm okay with not giving up another top five prospect. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I don't granted. think they were. I don't think they were jumping for joy when they had to go up how you leave for <laughs> yeah. Michael Lorenzen. Right. Yeah. And yeah, ideally, you don't have to do something like that. Um, Thankfully, like if you look at our prospects this year, my guess would be he's not in the top five. Like I would guess that how you leave probably somewhere in the top 10 range for sure, but right. um, was a lower ceiling guy. So you're okay with giving him up, but yeah, I mean, I would hope that wouldn't have to be the case again. So, yeah. and yeah, this is what we were talking about too. Like Jay, I completely agree with Jason. He says, I think I'd rather wait until next season and try and get Juan Soto. Yeah. Why spend the money on Jordan Montgomery when right. you could have all 
this money ready to go for a guy like Juan Soto. And you imagine adding Juan Soto, like, I don't care how many lefties we got at that point. It's Juan freaking Soto. That's a generational hitter right there. That guy gets walked more than Barry Bonds did. Um, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible to see what he does on a daily basis in big leagues. And even last year, he had an off year, and he was still really, really darn good. So, I mean, I, I don't think we're going to get him, but I would really hope we put all our chips in and say, hey, we'll offer you however much you want if you come to Philadelphia and just give ourselves the best chance. So I would certainly kind of like they did for Yamamoto. Again. Yeah, exactly. As, as reported, you know, um, you know, if that is the case, I would love if they did that for Soto too. Like that, yeah. I, I can't even imagine having Juan Soto and Bryce Harper on the same baseball field. That's just like, I, I couldn't comprehend that. <laughs> yeah, national fans live that. And now yeah. they have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right, That's... right. Did they, did they play together for, I, I, was Juan Soto's rookie year, the World Series year? Did they play together? No, uh, I think he played the year before that. I think okay. they were on the same team for a little bit. That's and then crazy. they also had Trey Turner, right? So that's Yeah, Juan and Trey did play together. So and yep. K Long was K Long there too? With yeah, them? I think he was, yeah. Uh, that, that the K Long, like Cotham gets rightfully gets a ton of praise, but like I think yeah. K Long, um, just like Cotham, like there's been guys who have wanted to come here because of him too. And thankfully we have some of those nationals guys too. Like, um, yeah, oh, dude, that would be, that'd be crazy. Like there's <laughs> definitely, there's definitely some pull we have. Like I don't, yeah. again, I don't think Juan Soto is going to choose the Phillies. I, I honestly would expect him to end up back in New York. If anything, I think they're going to have a good year and I think he's going to want to stick around there. Like, I think it's a good spot for him too. Um, short but, porch. Yeah. Yeah. That too. I mean, um, we got, we got a pretty solid right field wall too, like for him to hit some bombs sure. over. Like he, he won't have any problems getting it over there, but obviously Yankee stadium, he's going to get some generous, uh, some generous, some generous fly balls for sure. So <laughs> can I just rant for a second? I hate yeah. that. I hate that right field wall in Yankee stadium. Like it's like a little league field. Like these guys yeah. get home runs on like 310 foot of like fly balls, like yeah. routine fly balls in other stadiums. These, these balls are five rows deep. You know, I, I hate that. Yeah. It just irks me so bad. Yeah, it's frustrating, man. It's frustrating. Um, and on the rants real quick, Phillies really were posting a thank you, JK post. Like, does everyone get a thank you post now? <laughs> that's that's my that's my I guess that's my rant for the day. I just it literally popped up on my feed right as you were saying that. Um yeah. like I I don't know, like now granted, he's not gonna get a tribute video, but it feels like everyone's getting a tribute video now too, like these thank you posts and these tribute videos need to be reserved for the guys who actually earn them. In my opinion, like you need to have, it, it can't be regular occurrence. It needs to be something special for certain guys. That's just my opinion. But, um, JK really like a, a thank you post for a guy who spent a season here. I don't know, man. I don't know. Can we, but, can we see this? Are yep, you guys I, able to see? I can, I can pull it up. Yep. Right. There's Matt Strom's extension. If anybody wants to see that real quick. Yeah. So seven point five million for twenty twenty five, and then the club option it can best at seven point five again. Um, I honestly feel like he'll he'll probably hit that innings mark. I would guess. Um, yeah, that's next year. Sixty innings next year. So got it. Okay, he could be in a totally different spot next year from where he is now. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you good with me stopping the screen share? Yep, oh, yep. I turned yep. it off. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, I look. What what did he get? He's on two for fifteen. Like. That's not even much of a jump, and I right. think it's. I think he earned it too. He absolutely. I think he's. It. I think he's happy here too. Like he's. Yeah. He enjoys playing here. Mm -hmm. I mean, he tweeted out right after the extension was announced. Um, yeah. And the Phillies retweeted it, so it seems like he's happy here. And uh, one of our friends of the pod tweeted out, uh, "Now we just need a Hoffman extension, and we're set." And I agree with uh, said person who tweeted that out too. Um, Nola is my dad. If you guys know him, uh, he's on Twitter. You might know him around our our, our parts of town for. Uh, our podcast, but um, I agree with him for sure. So, yeah, I'm, I think they're going to go for that as well. I think they're going to try to get yeah. Hoffman extended. I mean, if, yeah. they're extend, if they're looking to extend Strom, they're definitely looking to extend Hoffman because Hoffman's yeah. better than Strom. A lot better. Or was, yeah. was better than Strom last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe, I mean, the only way they wouldn't do that maybe is like, hey, we want to see it again and then we'll go after right. it. But I mean, man, Jeff Hoffman's special. He's so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I could kind of understand that just because Hoffman did have some flashes. Like he had some, he had a good year with the Reds, I believe, before he got here. Um, not amazing, but it was solid for sure. And there were signs. But Strom, at least, like you, you've seen him pitch at the major league level and have success multiple times before. 
Whereas I guess like Hoffman, he has pitched in the major league level before, but they maybe they want to see a little bit more of the success there. Um, so I don't know, but yeah. Uh, according to Sean, uh, Drew has Drew has been one of the people who has not been very kind to the Brian Snicker and his family. So um, Drew, I don't know if you can confirm or deny that for us, but yeah, I'm guilty, guilty. <laughs> That, that I hate was... that too. I hate that because he acts like they their fans don't do that to our fans, and they definitely do. Who, it's just... Which what fan base has been throwing trash on the field during the playoffs? Has it exactly. been ours? I don't think yeah. it's been ours. I don't think it was. Yeah, and it's like you're telling yeah. me that there's not fans down there who are saying stuff to our players, and and right. I'm sure there's. I'm sure that's occurred before. Like, yeah, it's a thing. It get it's people act like it's only the Phillies fan base when it's like okay, like. Yeah, maybe it gets more magnified when it happens with the Philly fan base, but that does not mean it doesn't happen in other fan bases. So, yeah, I don't it's, know, man. It's pretty criminal that we just get <laughs> singled out like that, but, you yeah. know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, Ethan agrees. Eagles' chance at Phillies games are disgraceful. It shows how unloyal these Phillies fans are. Uh, I wouldn't even say unloyal. It's just, like, really, do like we have do we have to do this at the Phillies games and make this about the Eagles somehow? Like, I don't know. Just bothers me. Um, yeah, I think you'll see less and less of that here over the years as yeah as the Phillies stay good. Yeah, that's the only that's the only downside to the Phillies now being good again is that you have a lot of the city that is more so Eagles fans or fans of the other teams or you know kind of hop on the Phillies when they're good. You have them hopping on now too. But it is what it yeah. is. We welcome all fans of um, of all levels of all degrees. So. Uh, Sean says with Cave going as Pache a lock or does Cody Clemens going to our spot off the bench? So Cody hasn't been uh, re-signed to the minor league camp yet uh, or optioned, I guess it would be for him. That being said, I, I don't think he's enough of a left-handed bat to where you would keep him up here. Like I just, right. I would be, and they don't need his versatility with Merrifield right. and Sosa. Merrifield and Sosa with, between those two, you cover most of the positions. Yeah. And I Merrifield, just, if Merrifield would get hurt, Hey, or Clemens is definitely the guy that's going to come up and fill that sure. role. Absolutely. But I just, they don't really have a need for a guy like that right now because he's a, he's a defense first kind of player because he doesn't really hit at the major league level. And we've seen that kind of like Jake cave. So. <laughs> yeah, I, there was a, I think I said this before in the pod, there was a lot of Jake cave versus Cody Clemens talk throughout the past year or year and a half. And I just, it just does not matter to me they, they are both like the same level of hitter jk just with a little more power right i think you're not really seeing much of a difference there between which one of them is on the roster or not um so it just kind of comes down to like it's build a player at that point right it's like what do you need on your roster what does this guy do better than the other that you could use more of right now so yeah um and ethan agrees i don't see cody clemens coming up against bryce gets hurt and again if someone on the bench gets hurt i also could see cody clemens coming up too because he fills positions um, he can eat innings for you at a certain position for a stretch of the season, but or he can eat innings guys. for you on the mound. That also, yeah. I mean, he struck out Shohei, so um, <laughs> yeah, something else, man. Those like the end spring training with, yeah, <laughs> a lot of ties this spring, a lot of ties for sure. Um, that's been fun. Uh, and Jonathan says, I'm extremely thankful Jake Gabe is gone. Maybe that's what they meant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely, yeah, that could very well be the meaning of the post too. Thank you, JK, for being on a different roster now. I'm very glad yeah. that that's the case. So. Thank you for the cash. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and yeah, like Sean said, Rowdy fans exist everywhere. So I'm with you on that. Anything else you wanted to talk about, Drew, before we kind of wrap up here? No, I think I think we hit all the nails that we kind of wanted to here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, like I really like that. And think Anthony has Benson tweets this out too. Like he says, Alvarado and Strom are locked up for 2025 and both have club options for 2026. Love that. Right. I mean, that's two guys who are really essential to this bullpen right now from the left handed yep. side of the mound. Um, that's the bullpen right now. Like you want these guys here for multiple years. And I'm really excited, man. Like I really am hyped for Thursday. We got some content coming for you guys before Thursday too. As Drew is uh, going to rest up the rest of the day and be on the mend, so that'll be good too. Before we get into some some more content here before opening day, but anything you want to say before we sign off, Drew? Nope. I mean, if you guys aren't already, which I think a lot of people that are in here have been, but uh, join the Discord. You know, that's kind of the best way to keep up with us, like get notified when we're going live and stuff. I yeah. believe uh, I can shoot a link in the chat real quick. Give me one second. 
Yep. Go for it. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be doing some fun stuff in the discord as the year goes on to, you know, maybe some giveaways planned. We haven't nailed that down quite yet, but we're going to have that going. You can talk in different channels. If you only want to talk Phillies and Flyers or Eagles and Sixers, you can just roll a sign and do those two teams too. And just be in those two chats. Um, if you want to do all the teams, you can do that. But, uh, yeah, we're always talking Phils in there, especially. Um, that's the main thing in there that people are in there for is talking Phillies. And um, the Phillies Discord just keeps growing by the day. So we're glad yep. to have a lot of Phillies people in there. Um, we love talking Phils with you guys. And, yeah, we're looking forward to talking more with you guys as the season moves forward. So yep, um, absolutely. it's going to be a fun one. And, uh, yeah, for the future lives too, I, my, I always forget to do this, but I'm going to start getting in the habit of – I'm going to pin the discord link at the top of our live stream chat so that you guys can hop in there. Um, if you're not already in there and then if anyone new is coming to the stream too, you can hop in to the discord as well and, and talk fills with us even when we're not on stream. So um, yeah, but we're going to be previewing opening day reacting. I mean, we, I don't think there's much to react to the 26 man roster at this point. So if there's any surprises, we'll react to that. But um, yeah, we'll be talking about opening day coming up. We're going to be talking about, uh, we'll be doing post games too as the year moves forward. We're going to try to do them every game. Obviously, it's not realistic to do a post game for every game, but to start the year, we are going to do post games after every game. So um, keep an eye on that. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm going to try to get a hype video out before the season starts. Yeah, some fun content coming. So um, yeah, make sure you turn the noties on on the YouTube. Absolutely. Yeah. Good way to keep up with us as well. Yep. And if you're in the Discord, you don't even need to have them on because we'll let you know when we're going live too. So yep. um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate all y'all. God bless y'all. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Everybody have a good day.